Recently, one of you in the comments mentioned that you were having trouble creating space for yourself offensively when playing defense, and that is a common struggle for every defenseman, I can assure you that. But unfortunately, because this topic came up recently, I am going with just the old school X's and O's approach here rather than gameplay, although I don't really see that as a negative. Creating space as a defenseman is really only possible when you look at the game from an X's and O's perspective. And I'll, I'll say this up front. This is for people, and this is really going to be effective when you're playing good teams. If you're playing bad teams, you're not going to have trouble getting these passing plays off, getting one-timers from the point, etc. Although I should say, to better help understand where I'm coming from, feel free to check out my tutorial on offensive positioning. When you're playing a team that is solid defensively, the biggest way to counter that is knowing not only where you need to be and what you need to be doing individually, but the same goes for your teammates. And I'll give you a quick, brief overview here. This is how my team generally tries to structure themselves when we have extended zone time. The center, of course, takes the front of the net and just creates havoc for the other team. The goal is simply create screens for your teammates, one-timers, wrist shots, and of course to put yourself in position for deflections. You just stay in front of the goalie no matter where the puck is. You stay in front of them and you give them as much trouble as you possibly can. The wingers, of course, have identical roles, just on opposite sides, and for them, it's all about the options. Depending on where the puck is, you can cycle high, you can cycle low, you can throw the puck on, you can step in front, many, many different options. It, it, it really is, though, all about what the other team gives you, and the same goes for defense. If you have the puck, you had, at the very least have three different passing options and a shooting option. But getting into the point of this particular video, what do you do if you don't have the puck, but you also can't get open? Say we're the right D in this example, and our left defenseman has the puck. Now, of course, you are one of his three main passing options, but if your opponent is playing the passing lane or simply playing the body and man coverage, you're kind of stuck. And from here, it is down to communication with your team and your team's ability to read the play. But that is why we have the options. If your opponent is playing the passing lane and looking to steal the puck for an easy breakaway, you do have good ways to counter. Unfortunately, none of them involve you actually getting the puck from your preferred spot for a one-timer. If someone is covering you and your shooting option properly, it's just not going to happen and you don't want to force it. But again, you have a way to counter. You have options. Now, one, admittingly, is more dangerous than the other, and that is the first one that we'll mention. If he is playing the passing lane, crash the net. Let your team know, of course. Again, communication is key. But crash the net. Make yourself a threat and make your opponent realize that he doesn't just have it, you know, he doesn't just have an easy play. Like, oh, all I have to do is stand here. He's not going to do anything and we're good to go. My opponent's neutralized. You want to make your opponent as uncomfortable as they can be. You want to take away their confidence defensively. But of course, that is where the danger comes into play if you choose to crash the net. If he bites and he follows you, Odds are he'll start playing man coverage, and it's much more manageable to be effective if your opponent's just staying tight to your individual player rather than trying to play the pass. If he doesn't move, if he doesn't follow you, and he stays at the blue line or even starts to cherry pick for a potential counterattack, then you go to option two, and that is communicating with your winger, no matter what side you're on, and switching it up. Again, it doesn't matter what side you're on, but with this example, will still be the right defenseman. If they have that player watching the lane, you need to force them into making mistakes. You need to force them into playing a different style of defense. And again, the idea is to get them to play man coverage. And switching with a winger gives you another opportunity to see how they'll react. Does that player that's covering you, that's marking you, so to speak, to use a football term, do they follow you? How does the player that's covering your winger react? If you're not an option, you need to cause panic and just do whatever you can to open up space. Again, the goal is to play man coverage, and as far as the winger swap idea goes, you just have to see how each of those players react. 
if they're afraid of you moving around and they stick right to you, your job just became so much easier because all you have to do at the point where your opponent is just sticking to you rather than trying to play the pass, just get out of the way. If they're hugging you, drift as far away from the play as possible to drag them out of position and that will create more space for your teammates. Again, if we are the right D and on the right side, this will open up space for your right wing to potentially do some damage if he gets a pass from your left wing or your left defenseman. If you can't be an option for your teammates, you need to do whatever it takes to make things easier on them. Again, as a team, knowing where one another are going to be and knowing what you have to do individually on any given possession is just invaluable. And having numerous options is a great way to stay in control while forcing your opponents to constantly be on their toes. If you're playing defense and you can't get that puck, it leads to frustration and frustration leads to goals for your opponents. It's all about composure and controlling the game. And even when you're not directly controlling the game with the puck, your actions and positioning can alter the outcome, can control the game, can control every single play. That's it for this one, guys. Again, it was a spur-of-the-moment decision to make this video, and I do hope that you found it helpful. I can't promise many other tutorials moving forward, although you should keep an eye out on my EASHL series, as I'll be using that to talk about certain plays, concepts, as they happen for me in game if you guys did enjoy this of course make sure to hit that like button to help support my channel subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you guys next time